iwradio.co.uk. Isle of Wight Radio. Planning for Core Abbey, mm-hmm. and yet we've made the decision to invite in the community yeah. um, for a number of projects. Let's talk about the tea room first. That's had a complete refurbishment and a, a sort of completely new aspect to, to the Abbey. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, it's a beautiful setting here, so it lends itself perfectly to tea rooms. Uh, and we've upgraded the tea room, we've brought in professional staff, uh, again, so that people that visit the Abbey can enjoy the full hospitality as offered by the community of monks here. Um, So yeah, it's a full tea room now, open to all people. Was that a difficult decision to make, given the the solitude of the Abbey and, and, and the sort of pace of life here and the requirements of life here? Uh, Of course it was a difficult decision to make and uh, I think the community of monks here made a very brave decision um, to refurbish the tea shop. Um, The worst thing any of us could do is spoil the quiet uh, peacefulness of Quar Abbey uh, and the monks are very, very mindful of that and they want to protect that more than anything so that all people do have a a place that they can enjoy in, in peace and quiet. Uh, and so we're, we're very careful how we operate the tea shop. The opening hours are reduced uh, and we're, we're very mindful of the way it works and to make sure that it, that it is befitting a monastery. Um, and you've also got a brand new project which is to do with the, uh, the, the land here. Just tell me how you've uh, involved the community in terms of that. Yeah, the the monks are very keen to engage with the outside community and uh, involve them and and share what they have here at Core Abbey in appropriate ways. So the monks uh, allow plots of land to be used by um, appropriate charities on a free of charge rental basis. The charities grow produce on the land which we buy off the charities at half the market price. So we look at the price of carrots in Tesco's and we buy buy carrots off off the charities at half that price. We then use that food through the tea shop, we sell it as it is or or use it in the the catering there. So of course the monastery benefits but so does the charity. They get some income uh, and also the members of the charity, many of them disabled people, uh, have you know uh, a good use for their day-to-day activities. They can come here and, and do suitable work and outdoor activity exercise, learn about gardening, that sort of stuff. So it's very good for the charity, it's very good for the monastery, and I think it's of interest to visitors that come here as well. So I think all round it's a good, good project. And just very finally, tell me a little bit about the community of monks and, and the people that actually live on this site as well as just do the visiting. Okay, we have a, a community of eight monks here. I'm not their spokesperson, and uh, I, you know I don't live their way of life. That that's very private to them, and they're very, uh, um, you know, they do like to live in private. Uh, they lead a very quiet life, but they fully accept and understand that they they engage with the outside world as well. Um, so they have uh, seven or eight church services a day. Uh, the day is about quiet contemplation um, and, and that's how they lead their lives. They have their, their meals in silence and they have a grand silence overnight as well. Um, but aside from that, uh, the life of a monk does involve uh, having to do work as well, manual work or, or other work. So each and every one of the monks does ha- actually have a, a full-time job to do uh, as, as well as their theocratic role.